Moraxella cataralis, Wikipedia article audio. Moraxella cataralis is a fastidious, nonmodal, gram negative, aerobic, oxidase positive diplococcus that can cause infections of the respiratory system, middle ear, eye, central nervous system, and joints of humans. It causes the infection of the host cell by sticking to the host cell using trimeric autotransporter adhesins. Epidemiology History Genetics Clinical significance Link with bacteremia Antibiotic resistance Treatment Vaccine development Biochemistry M. cataralis is a human pathogen with an affinity for the human upper respiratory tract. Other primates, such as macaques, might become infected by this bacterium. M. cataralis was previously placed in a separate genus named Branhamella. The rationale for this was that other members of the genus Moraxella are rod-shaped and rarely caused infections in humans. However, results from DNA hybridization studies and 16 srRNA sequence comparisons were used to justify inclusion of the species M. cataralis in the genus Moraxella. As a consequence, the name Moraxella cataralis is currently preferred for these bacteria. Nevertheless, some in the medical field continue to call these bacteria Branhamella cataralis. Moraxella is named after Victor Morax, a Swiss ophthalmologist who first described this genus of bacteria. Cataralis is derived from catar, from the Greek meaning to flow down, describing the profuse discharge from eyes and nose typically associated with severe inflammation in colds. The whole genome sequence of M. cataralis CCUG353 type strain was deposited and published in DNA Data Bank of Japan, European Nucleotide Archive, and GenBank in 2016 under the accession number LWAH00000000. These bacteria are known to cause otitis media, bronchitis, sinusitis, and laryngitis. Elderly patients and long-term heavy smokers with chronic pulmonary disease should be aware that M. cataralis is associated with bronchopneumonia as well as exacerbations of existing chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The peak rate of colonization by M. cataralis appears to occur around two years of age, with a striking difference in colonization rates between children and adults. M. cataralis has recently been gaining attention as an emerging human pathogen. It has been identified as an important cause in bronchopulmonary infection, causing infection through pulmonary aspiration in the upper pulmonary tract. Additionally, it causes bacterial pneumonia, especially in adults with a compromised immune system. It has also been known to cause infective exacerbations in adults with chronic lung disease, and it is an important cause in acute sinusitis maxillary sinusitis, bacteremia, meningitis, conjunctivitis, acute purulent irritation of chronic bronchitis, urethritis, septicemia, septic arthritis, and acute laryngitis in adults and acute otitis media in children. M. cataralis is an opportunistic pulmonary invader and causes harm especially in patients who have compromised immune systems or any underlying chronic disease. M. cataralis has also been linked with septic arthritis in conjunction with bacteremia. Although cases of bacteremia caused by M. cataralis have been reported before, this was the first instance in which bacteremia caused by M. cataralis was also associated with septic arthritis. 
A microbiological evaluation of the patient revealed that M. cataralis was the cause of the disease rather than Neisseria as was previously believed. This was also the second case of M. cataralis causing septic arthritis. Along with its relation to septic arthritis, bacteremia is also caused by M. cataralis infection which can range in severity from a slight fever to lethal sepsis and an associated respiratory tract infection is usually also identified. Bacteremia infections caused by M. cataralis have a 21% mortality rate among patients. However, this may have been due to a lack of knowledge about the bacterium because of its recent recognition as a pathogen. Infection of high-grade bacteremia was linked with the development of endocarditis. However, the patients without endocarditis has been related to the background of each patient, especially the existence of other illnesses and any possible immune impairments they may have. Also, although bacteremia caused by M. cataralis has been infrequently reported, this may be due to a misdiagnosis or oversight because M. cataralis was only recently identified as an important pathogen. Many chronic diseases in patients with M. cataralis bacteremia can be linked to the patients with immune defects or respiratory debility. Likewise, respiratory debility in patients with bacteremic pneumonia caused by M. cataralis infection can be linked with increased rates of pharyngeal colonization, enhancement of bacterial adherence to abnormal epithelium, and increased susceptibility of pulmonary parenchyma to infection. M. cataralis can be treated with antibiotics, but it is commonly resistant to penicillin, ampicillin, and amoxicillin. Current research priorities involve trying to find a suitable vaccine for this genotypically diverse organism, as well as determining factors involved with virulence, e.g. complement resistance. Lipooligosaccharide is considered one possible virulence factor. Since the recent recognition of M. cataralis as an important pathogenic microbe, development of a possible antibiotic has been ongoing. A fraction of M. cataralis strains seem to be resistant to ampicillin, which makes ampicillin and amoxicillin inappropriate choices of antibiotic against it. Although all strains of M. cataralis were susceptible to cotrimoxisol, erythromycin, sulfidimidine, and tetracycline, they were also resistant to trimethoprim. One of the reasons for the resistance of M. cataralis to ampicillin and trimethoprim is because of the beta-lactamase production, which allows resistance to ampicillin. Also, the resistance of M. cataralis to other antibiotics may be attributed to beta-lactamase, as well, because the use of these antibiotics has triggered an increase in development of beta-lactamase, which resists antibiotics. However, a 1994 study has identified a large protein on the surface of M. cataralis that may serve as a target for protective antibodies. This USPA protein is the first surface exposed protein on M. cataralis that can be a target for biologically active antibodies, and therefore lead to a vaccination. This protein was also present in all of the strains tested. The large size of the exposed protein macromolecule makes it similar to Neisseria gonorrhoeae outer membrane protein macromolecular complex, which implies that USPA may be a single polypeptide chain. Active immunization, in a study, of M. cataralis in the respiratory tract allowed the control of the growth of M. cataralis and led to the development of serum antigens. Also, an enhanced ability exists in the test subjects to clear M. cataralis from their lungs. Likewise, passive immunization of M. cataralis from the mice respiratory tracts also enhanced the mice's ability to clear the microbes from their lungs, 
which means that serum antibodies likely play a large role in the immunization and protection of the respiratory tract. Along with outer membrane proteins that are consistent among different strains of M. cataralis, a sort of subclass-specific IgG antibody response to certain outer membrane proteins may also exist. Therefore, the outer membrane antigens of M. cataralis also provide a possible vaccine source. Also, a bactericidal serum antibody has also been developed in response to the diseases caused by M. cataralis. Treatment options include antibiotic therapy or a so-called watchful waiting approach. The great majority of clinical isolates of this organism produce beta-lactamases, so are resistant to penicillin. Resistance to trimethoprim, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, clindamycin, and tetracycline have been reported. It is susceptible to fluoroquinolones most second- and third-generation cephalosporins, erythromycin, and amoxicillin clavulinate. Currently, no vaccine is known in the U.S. against M. cataralis infection. It is a significant cause of respiratory tract infections against which a vaccine is sought. Several outer membrane proteins are currently under investigation as potential vaccine antigens, including the porin M35. During the first reported case of M. cataralis causing bacteremia that was associated with septic arthritis, the microbe was cultured, which revealed much about the morphology of its colonies, as well as M. cataralis itself. M. cataralis is a large, kidney-shaped, gram-negative diplococcus. It can be cultured on blood and chocolate agar plates after an aerobic incubation at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. Cultures revealed grey-white hemispheric colonies about 1 mm in diameter. These colonies were fragile and easy to crumble, and appeared to have a waxy surface. The hockey puck test was applied to these M. cataralis colonies in which a wooden stick is used to try to push the colonies across the plate. The M. cataralis colonies scored positively on this test, which means they could be slid across the plate. The colonies did not demonstrate hemolysis, and were not able to ferment glucose, sucrose, maltose, or lactose. They were able to produce dinase. Cultures of the M. cataralis tested positive for oxidase and nitrate reduction, which is characteristic of M. cataralis. Many laboratories also perform a butyrate esterase test and a beta-lactamase test. Both tests should be positive and can help to rapidly identify it from a culture. The recognition of M. cataralis as a pathogen has led to studies for possible antibodies against it, which have led to a wider understanding of its composition. The outer membrane protein profiles of different strains of M. cataralis are extremely similar to each other. Analyses of these OMP profiles with monoclonal antibodies revealed that a few proteins with similar molecular masses in the different strains have cross-reactive epitopes. Also, a surface-exposed protein on M. cataralis has an unusually high molecular mass. An 80 cata OMP on M. cataralis is immunogenic and common to all non-encapsulated strands of M. cataralis which suggests it may be used as an antigen for immunization.